Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. Those of you who follow me on social media will know that a few days ago I showed you several leaf canes and asked you whether there was one in particular that you wanted me to do and this one which was number six came out just ahead of the game so this is the one that I'm planning to do for you today. So I'll show you this one but I also just wanted to show you that of course you can do it in different colours in which case it looks more like a petal cane. So whilst I'm calling this a tropical leaf cane it can also be a petal cane. It's actually a relatively simple leaf because all we're doing is one Skinner blend. So it's a relatively short video compared to some of mine, but hopefully this is a fun one and you can use it in lots of your polymer clay projects. So let's get straight onto it and start with the equipment that you're going to need. The equipment I'm using is very simple and very standard. And as we're just making a cane, very minimal. I use a polymer clay blade. I often refer to these as tissue blades craft knife, a polymer clay roller, something like this cable needle, this is a four millimeter one but something around that size works well. I do use a measuring sheet to work on, this one is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net and I simply laminate mine to make it easy to use and I've downloaded the four squares to one inch but of course you can do it in centimeters if you prefer. I work on a large tile I use biodegradable wet wipes to clean my hands and my equipment as I go along. Wet cloths are an easy alternative if you would rather. And of course I do use a pasta machine dedicated for polymer clay use to condition the clay. If you don't have a pasta machine then you can simply stack layers of playing cards on either side and with your roller roll over the top to give yourself sheets of clay where I put mine through the pasta machine and you can also do a Skinner blend in exactly the same way simply by folding and rolling folding and rolling each time. So that's it for the equipment let's move on to the clay. For today's project I'm using Fimo Soft but all of the well-known recognized brands of polymer clay will work equally well with this technique. I've got quite a large amount of clay here because I'm making a large cane just to show you as the demonstration however you can get away with just using half this amount if you would rather. So the colours I've gone for are lemon yellow, tropical green, emerald green, apple green and then I've got a mixture here with the cherry red and some chocolate brown to give myself a nice deep sort of um, luscious rich dark red shade. These three are going to be made into a Skinner blend and are the base of the leaf and then this is the outline and this is going to be the leaf vein so just choose whichever colours you would like to do that. For these amounts I've got three quarters of an ounce or 21 grams of these three colours. I've got half an ounce or 14 grams of the apple green and then I've got the same as this so three quarters of an ounce or 21 grams of the cherry red and then a quarter of an ounce or seven grams of the chocolate. First thing I will do is get all this clay conditioned in these colours, obviously mixing those two as I go to mix the nice shade, and I'll condition them using setting number three of my pasta machine. And on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. If you're unsure how to or why we condition polymer clay, then I do have a video tutorial on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one. So let's get started. The whole leaf is essentially made up of a single Skinner blend. So I'm going to do a Skinner blend between the lemon, the tropical green and the emerald green. And as I said, I've conditioned this all and put it through on setting number three of my pasta machine. If you're unused to doing Skinner blends, then I do have a video tutorial with a few tips and techniques on that. And I'll put a link to that in the video description below this one. But all we're going to do is just a very standard, straightforward Skinner blend. We do a diagonal cut through the end pieces and a cut down the middle of the middle piece. So lay those two pieces on top of each other and then put them together so that you have that nice diagonal split down the middle. Give it a bit of a roll because we've got a lot of clay here. And then as per normal I will simply fold them up, pinch where the fold is just to give it more chance to go through the pasta machine and I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine and each time fold bottom to top so I have a nice blend through from one colour through to the next and I'll bring you back when I've got that done. Once the blend's done 
I'm going to cut this into two pieces because I find it easier to do it in two separate pieces rather than just one um, and you'll see why when we get to the stage we're doing in a minute when we do the measuring and then I'm going to cut that in half put the two pieces together and I'm going to put it back down through the pasta machine the pinched end first, the dark colour first on the same setting that I'm already using and now I'll go down to my thinnest usable setting, which for me is setting 9 on my pasta machine. Again, dark end first to give me a nice, long, thin strip of clay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this up from the light end towards the dark, rolling nice and tight, making sure there's no air bubbles trapped in between. OK, so now we have our plug of clay with a light colour on the inside going towards the dark and then I'm going to repeat exactly the same with this, cutting it in half, putting it back through on the same setting, then down to my thinnest setting and then rolling it up till I have two plugs like this. So there are two plugs, all finished, and now it's up to you what you do at this stage. What I'm going to do and show you is I'm going to cover each of these rounds in a very thin layer of this nice dark red from those two, two colours that I mixed up. However, I will show you a petal cane later on where I haven't done the outside colour, so you can see the difference between the two and decide what you want to do. So all I'm going to do for the moment, take probably about half of this, because there's enough to do a bit later on that we're going to work with as well, and I'm going to put that through on a thin setting, so again for me setting number nine, just to give a nice thin coating around the outside of those pieces. So you can generally see where it overlaps, so just take it off at that point. With any luck, I've got enough to do around this one as well. So there are two plugs of clay surrounded by the darker red colour. So the next thing I'm going to do, put one to one side and work on one at a time. And I'm just going to chop down the middle and chop it into quarters. It doesn't matter if these come out slightly unevenly because after all this is a leaf we're doing, which is a natural thing. So if every slice we take is slightly different, that's absolutely fine. And then all we're going to do, as I do so often in my videos, we're just going to pull up these sides ever so slightly all the way down the length and you can either do it up in the air or you can do it down on your tile whichever is easier and then I'm just going to press the bottom slightly flatter. Do the same with the second piece put your two pieces together and with the third and the fourth those two pieces together and then I'm pressing all four together but just at the bottom and that really helps move that dark colour up on the inside. Once I've got them all together that's the point at which I then pull over to create the point at the top. So we get a triangular piece and what we're going to do now is we are going to reduce this down until it's five inches or 12 and a half centimeters in length and by reducing it all I'm doing is I'm pressing in along the whole of the length keeping it in that shape and what will eventually happen completely naturally is you end up with an equilateral triangle every so often you can swap it around the other way to make sure you get nice even pressure and I'll continue to do that till I've got it to that length Once you've got it to roughly that size, I'm just going to take off 
and neat on the end. I'm going to cut off myself one and a half inches, although if you're doing it in centimetres, I'd recommend doing four centimetres because it's going to work out easier for what we do in a minute. Um, so there's our large piece of the leaf. And this extra piece, I'm now going to reduce this until it's either six inches in length, or I would suggest 16 centimetres. And then once we've got it to that, we're going to cut it into four equal pieces. So if you're doing inches, it'll be one and a half inches four times. And if you're doing centimetres, then obviously four centimetres four times. So I'll fast forward through that, but you'll see what I am doing. Okay, so now we have our large piece and four smaller pieces. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our second roll and we're going to do exactly the same, put it into quarters, pinch the bottoms to put it together in the triangular format exactly the same as we did. And this time this whole piece is going to go to either six inches or 16 centimetres. And again, we're going to chop off four, either one and a half inches or four centimetre pieces. So I'll fast forward through that because it's exactly the same as we've just done, but so that you can see what it is we are doing. So there we have our medium pieces to go with our larger and our four smaller pieces. So what we've got to do now is to put them all together. So I'm going to start with my large piece and that's going to stay basically the same shape. But I'm going to, with my cable needle, just put a groove in the top to put our two pieces in. So one sort of about there and one about there. Then I'm going to get two of the medium pieces and what I'm going to do is with my thumb I'm just going to flatten down the corner points and I find it easier doing that flat on the tile. And I'm also just going to make them very slightly thinner. And what you will generally find is that when you put the grooves in this came slightly um, wider but if it hasn't done um, just sit that in there for now and then you can just push that down to its the right height. So you can see I've put that inside the groove and do the same top and bottom. Same with the second piece. So just rounding off the edges, pressing it um, narrower, pulling that bit longer and then just fitting that into the second groove. Make sure it's in top and bottom. And when you've done that, sit that piece down so it's flat on the tile and just press it in so you've got more of a long triangular shape. And what we're looking for here is we're going to be growing this into quite a long, thin triangle. So don't let it get too wide. So having done that, we're going to set another two of the medium pieces in. So this time the groove is going right in the middle of these pieces. I'm just rolling my cable needle backwards and forwards till I create a groove. Exactly the same. Take off the sharp edges and they can go narrower and you'll find that this has gone quite a lot taller by this stage. So these can go quite narrow and you can pull them long. And exactly the same till it fits in the groove. If it's too long just press this down slightly, fit that in the groove, top and bottom, repeat with the next piece. And although there's gaps there, when we press that down flat, like this, on the surface, those scraps will start to disappear. At this stage you can turn it on its side as well, just to push in. 
and what will happen is that gap in the middle will disappear. So those are our first pieces in and what we're going to do now is we're going to put all four of these pieces along the top. So as before a groove towards the edge and then a groove towards the middle and the same on this side. If it helps, turn it around the other way to do it from the other side, do that as well. And all you're looking for is just the grooves to stick these pieces into. Something a bit like that, so you've got four grooves. And then these pieces, they're obviously quite a bit smaller at the moment, but that's fine, we'll do exactly the same again. So press down on the sides. These ones can go really quite thin and of course quite tall. And as before, we are just going to set those into those gaps where the grooves are. Once all four pieces are on, exactly the same as before, just push it down and create more of a triangular shape. And that is the basis of our leaf. And don't forget, of course, it always looks messier on the top and the bottom than it will do on the inside. Also with this one, there's loads of possibilities. You could leave it just like that if you wanted to, force that into a leaf shape and have that as your leaf. What we're going to do at this stage though is do a few more steps to create the really ornate leaf that I showed you at the start. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to put this into two pieces. So to do that, I want to get it till it's about three inches or seven and a half centimeters wide. And I'm going to do that as we did before. We're just pressing down, but I'm going to try and keep this bit narrow at this stage. So when I turn it on its side and it's on the narrow side, I'll make sure I press that and keep it nice and narrow. And just keep doing that till it's about the right size that you can take two pieces easily from it. Okay, and there we start to see the pattern emerging. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to put a vein in the middle. And again, if you wanted to, just put the one vein in and keep that as your leaf. So to put the vein in the middle, I chose the light green and I'm going to get this to the thickest setting on my pasta machine. So at the moment it's conditioned and gone through on setting number three. So I'm going to put it through on my machine, naught is my thickest. So I'm going to put that through on setting number naught. And I'm looking for a piece, just neaten off the top there. Put it over one side. Now I don't want it to go right to the top, so probably about there is enough. So having done that, I will chop that off. And we'll keep all these bits of green to one side because we'll use those for our second insert and vein. And the first thing I'm going to do is where it would go to the top, with my fingers because it's a nice thick piece I'm just going to pinch we want a nice pinched top the top of our vein on our leaf and then I will go back to that deep red we've got and I want a piece that's going to fit over so I will cut it to size to start with to make life easy for myself and I only want a very very thin surround for this so again I will put this through on setting number nine that way in and then starting a nice flat cut with the thicker end. I will put that over there, press it down nice and flat, pull it to the point, put it back and then I can cut off the excess. I'm going to re-emphasize that point and we can now sit that slightly down against our piece and put the other one next to it and that's how we put our vein into our leaf cane.
So as I say, you could stop there and you could change the shape of it by pressing down here and making it more of a leaf shape. However, I'm going to go for the full nice rounded effect. And to do that, I want to have this pattern repeated three times. So I need to reduce this down until it is about four and a half inches, or I'd suggest about um, 12 centimetres in length and then cut it into three pieces. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way as we did before by pressing down. But again, I don't want this to spread too wide. So I want these two edges to be longer or wider than this one. stage where we'll be able to put all three pieces together to create that really ornate leaf cane. So the last things I'm going to do are going to just very gently as I've done before just round off these corner points so they're not so sharp. And then we'll add just an extra couple of veins in between the three pieces we're putting together. So I'm going to take the rest of our green and put it through on a setting that's going to be sufficient to go along the length of two pieces and as before from the point but not quite up to the top piece there. So I will get my clay to roughly the right height that I want it and then keep putting it through the pasta machine that way till I get to a piece that's long enough to go through across two pieces. That for me was setting number two and that's just about okay as far as I'm concerned because we're going to do a little bit of um, changing to the shape of it when we add the rest. So I'm going to take it off like that, neaten that bit off and then as before I'm going to pinch the top of it so I know that that's going to make it slightly wider as I go which is perfect. And now we can take the rest of our dark clay and luckily that's the right width for me so I'll put it through the past machine on my thinnest setting that way along on setting number nine and hopefully that'll be sufficient to cover over both sides of that piece. So as before put it down with the thicker end towards the start and then you can just fold that over where the point is Cut away the excess and by the time we've added more of a point in that should be sufficient to do two of our sides. So you can have a look see if you want to use two particular sides and how you want them to look. See whether one's going to look better in the middle than the other. I'm quite happy with that. So my two side pieces will have it on with a point going not quite to the top. And the same with that one, point going not quite to the top. So they'll sit like, do it towards me, so they'll sit like that. That one sits slightly above. And that one back down again. And that is effectively our leaf cane finish. Check of course, as always, that it's okay top and bottom reposition if necessary and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to very gently change the shape by pressing in at the sides and sort of rounding this off because the whole point of this leaf was to have a nice big round leaf as you get them at times um, that shape particularly the, the big sort of almost jungly type leaves um, and it just gives you a nice shape and a nice finish for what you're planning on doing. And obviously you can make it whatever size you like by reducing it down. But I'll just show you, let's just take a cut or cross. And 
and you can see what we've got by way of our leaf. So there you go, that's the finished leaf. And now I'll show you a couple of other examples to give you some options. So here's one, I didn't use this rounding colour right at the start where I cut the um, plug, but I added it at the point of which we'd put the first fade in and got that pattern. And that gives you that effect. And that was done with the olive green, tropical green and white. And then I've got cognac for the um, veins and black around the outside. And that comes out like that. Here's another sample with different colours. For this one I used brilliant blue, tropical green and the sunflower yellow. On the outside was the cherry red and then the stems in the middle was lemon yellow. And when I finish this one off I simply use the roller to create these sort of little grooves inside. And just to show you one of the things you can do with this one again, this one I made just a simple little leaf bowl. And this one is made following the tutorial a little polymer clay leaf bowl and I'll put a link to that in the details below this one. And as I mentioned, of course you can do it completely different colours um, to make it more of a petal cane. So this one I did as a petal and this is the one, as I said, again, I did no outer covering around that initial plug. So this was all done purely with the initial plug put down into quarters. And the colours for this one, I used raspberry, the lilac and white. And then for the inside I had lavender for the vein and then the plum, which is a very deep purple colour for the um, outline of the vein. I used the petal cane to make another bowl, slightly different this time, with some extra petals on the bottom. And I also added a little, a few inclusions. Doesn't make it particularly practical for a bowl, but then it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? So again, so that's showing you how it looks if you use the petals as a bowl. So that's the end of the tropical leaf cane in polymer clay, which can be used for leaves, but also possibly for a petal. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks so much for watching and as always a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have lots of fun with this one, experiment and create something wonderful. Or oh, one further thing, just as a thought, something that I've done before which I haven't done in the video, if you did different colours in graduating ones each the way is up this leaf, that gives a lovely effect as well. I'm off to do more experimenting, coming up with some new tutorials for you and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.